We need to make a painting showing people cooking their turkey Thanksgiving and their goose at Christmas using Crisco, and so they will love Crisco. And Norman Rockwell's mother and grandmother wouldn't let him do that. They said, no, no, we love our lard and butter and cream. You can't, we're not going to let you endorse this Crisco stuff in a can. And but so they got a Norman Rockwell-esque painter. Looked pretty good, but wasn't quite Norman Rockwell, but it said, the new Crisco made to help take the fat worry out of good eating. Well, it turns out the Crisco was the first product that was endorsed by the Good Housekeeping Seal of Approval. Well, that's where they came out with a Good Housekeeping Seal of Approval. It was for Crisco. Highly unsaturated, only um, New Crisco has doubled the preferred unsaturates. Now, I spent 35 years looking for the pivotal scientific article that showed that unsaturated fats, oils, were healthier for you than saturated fats, like lard and cream and butter and cholesterol. I looked for 35 years to find the article, and you know why I couldn't find it? It never existed. Now, Ansel Keys was a professor of medicine at the University of Minnesota. Remember this Nazi sympathizer? <laughs> and he was a professor of medicine. Oops, that's the Russian version. <laughs> I mean, he even, even looks like a Nazi. He was also in physiology. Dr. Ansel Keys, father of the low saturated fat, high oil diet, and drove Crisco as a replacement for butter and lard. He was considered the guy who saved America from cholesterol and saturated fats. Well, it turns out that everything was 180 degrees from what he really said. The culture on Earth that has the fewest cardiovascular events, the fewest strokes, and the fewest heart attacks, very well documented in every country's cardiology journals. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of articles written about the Inuit Indians above the Arctic Circle. Their traditional diet is 98% saturated fat and red meat. We're talking about whale meat and whale blubber, walrus meat and walrus blubber, seal meat and seal blubber, bear meat and bear fat. They do not eat vegetables or fruit or grains. They just want animal fat and red meat. Their cholesterol is run 350 to 500. They do not get heart attacks or strokes until they come down here and eat like us. Now, in 1971, based on those 20,000 autopsies they did for the National Institutes of Health, I had done 75 scientific papers. One of them was I looked at the, well, it was a natural thing to look for because heart disease was the big thing. So I compared the clogged arteries in vegetarian animals and people, vegan animals and people, and red meat eating animals and people, and the group that had the worst clogged arteries were the vegans. From both animals and people. Well, people who were vegans cooked everything in extra, 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 virgin, 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 Vegan animals would eat stored grains, and the oils in the stored grains, like wheat germ oil, would oxidize and turn into trans fatty acids and heterocyclic amines and acrylamides, and cause inflammation to the lining of the arteries of the animals. I mean, we're talking about cows and horses and kangaroos, and chickens and things like that that eat nothing but grain. They're getting the same plugged arteries as human beings who were, who were told this caused by eating too much cholesterol and too much red meat and saturated fat. Didn't make sense. That paper got published, okay, 1971. I said it was inflammatory oxidized oils. Well, in February of 2004, cover article of Time Magazine, The Secret Killer, Inflammation, was looked at as a cause of heart attacks and 
clogged arteries and cancer and Alzheimer's disease and so forth, not saturated fat and cholesterol. In February of 2012, the FDA sent out an email to every licensed medical doctor in America and said immediately, immediately, get your patients off of Lipitor, Crestor, Zocor, Mevacor, all the statin drugs. Stop telling your patients to eat cholesterol restricted diets because if they've been on a calorie restricted diet, excuse me, a cholesterol restricted diet for five years concurrently with a cholesterol lowering drug, a statin drug at the same time for that same five years, it increases the risk of type 2 diabetes by 52% and Alzheimer's disease by 100%. Now, how many of you had your doctor forward that email to you? Raise your hand. <laughs> not one. I, I've given this lecture quite a bit here for the last couple of years, and not one person has raised their hand and said, my doctor sent me an email. Well, four months later, in June of 2012, Science News, very well-respected scientific journal, which, which takes big cumbersome articles, very, very complex articles, 50 pages, many charts and tables, and, and to a busy practitioner, or a student, they may find it confusing. So they, they render it down to just a summary, a half a page or so. And the lead article, which I took out of the inside and put on the cover here, June, again, uh, 2012, good cholesterol, not beneficial. Higher HDL, which is a good cholesterol, high density lipoprotein, higher good cholesterol levels, higher HDL levels don't reduce heart attacks. Your doctor said it was everything. He decided on his treatment for you based on your good cholesterol levels. I said 1971, it was meaningless. Well, here we are in June of 2012. They're saying it's meaningless now. If you can have 100% of your total cholesterol, good cholesterol, it will not reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease by 1 million to 1%. Because cholesterol has nothing to do with cardiovascular disease. Congestive heart failure is caused by a deficiency of a single vitamin. We've known that since 1742. It was discovered by a Japanese naval surgeon. Cardiomyopathy heart disease causes sudden heart death of young athletes and people who do physical work. It's caused by a deficiency of a single mineral. I've personally done 1,700 autopsies and people who have died of the thing, I'm an expert now, caused by this deficiency of a single mineral. And there's coronary artery disease. That's not caused by cholesterol reading saturated fats, it's caused by inflammation, it's caused by eating fried foods and using salad dressings out of extra, 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 virgin, 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 Bam! You're dead! <laughs> this is one of my favorite stories, it came out in 1991. There's a letter, actually, to the editor of the New England Journal of Medicine in, in 1991, and there's a story that was sent in by Dr. Fred Kearns, he is a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School, and he's taking a group of senior students with him, medical students, who are you know, starting to see physical examinations and so forth. And um, he was in with a, a man who's 88 years old, and a um, uh, uh, guy looked pretty good for 88 years old and didn't have a lot of health problems, and, and his chemistries were just really great. And um, Dr. Kearns asked this fellow, what do you think you, you attribute your health to? You're looking pretty good. All your, you're not on any prescription drugs whatsoever. You're 88 years old. What do you attribute that to? And he says, proudly, I eat 25 eggs a day. He says, well, how many have you been eating 25 eggs? He says, oh, 18 years. 15 to 18 years. Well, Dr. Kearns, of course, is embarrassed. He's sweating in front of all these students. He says, well, let me check these things. He runs into the lab, he reruns the guy's blood himself to make sure there's no mess up in the laboratory. Comes back in, he sits down. Now this wasn't in the story, but I'm telling you, he was sitting there with a the clipboard fanning himself because he's nervous at this point because all the data came out the same. He said, okay, sir, tell me why you eat 25 eggs a day. Why have you been eating 25 eggs a day for 15 to 18 years? And the guy stood up proudly threw his shoulders back and says, because it makes me more studly. <laughs> Now you have to appreciate that testosterone is a steroid hormone and 95% by weight cholesterol. You go on statin drugs and you eat a cholesterol restricted diet, there ain't nobody home anymore. <laughs> you get low T. 
you get ED. Because they're all physician caused problems. Are you beginning to get the picture here? Now the final nail in the coffin of the saturated fat being bad and the cholesterol being bad came June 23rd, 2014. It's a cover story in Time Magazine. It was 10 pages, the story. And the title was, very simple, two words. Eat butter. The subtitle was, scientists labeled saturated fat the enemy, why were they wrong? The whole thing is the Ansel Keys story. Going back to when he talked Procter & Gamble into giving the American Heart Association $1.7 million, which is a lot of money back in those days, to endorse Crisco as a healthier way to eat. Now the Nazis, over a seven year period, which can include years before the war and during the Second World War, murdered somewhere, depending on whose figures you look at, between 40 and 60 million people. Tortured them and horrific things to people, gassed them, burned them, did experiments on living people. Killed somewhere between 40 and 60 million people. But because medical doctors pushed a cholesterol restricted diet, cholesterol lowering drugs, since 100 years ago, since 1914 to 2014, they have murdered 1 billion people in the free world. It's a failed medical theory. Now the next failed theory 